Hi, I'm Essie from Essie Makes Cards, and I hit on a technique using my mink machine and foiling and stencils that I think is new, certainly to me, maybe to you. I was working on this while I was making a holiday card for a friend of mine, Lydia Fiedler, and what I got was this 100% overfoiling of black cardstock and the foiled stenciled image I had done, and in between where the stencil and cardstock meet, this edge with no foil that gives you a beveled effect. I think it's beautiful. Here's what I used. My mink machine, of course, a selection of stencils, because I'll do some of these for you now, and I have a huge stencil stash. I also have a pretty sizable foil stash. You're going to need that too. Um, mostly, I've used regular stencils from make machines or laminators, but I also tried glimmer foil. You'll see how that works too. I had been working on this black shiny cardstock, something I just picked up along the way that I really like, but I thought it was the shine that made the difference and made the technique work. So I went ahead and got other shiny, shiny cardstock from my stash. Silver, a couple of gold, I even tried rose gold. And as you'll see, the technique works on metallic cardstock. You can also make it work on white, shiny cardstock. In this case, I used some old Kodak paper from my stash. So what do you use? Well, you use Decofoil Transfer Gel. That's kind of the industry standard. That's what I mostly use. But I tried a couple of other things, too. For my first two examples, I'm using black, shiny cardstock, and decafoil transfer gel with regular heat transfer foil sheets from my stash. And uh, you'll see that actually I got exactly the result that I was looking for. Here's the first one. It's an Argyle picket fence uh, stencil that I really like. I've got a great edge, a little bit of distressing where it didn't completely overfoil, but I really like that and a ton of shine. For my second try, I used an iridescent foil and these cute martini glasses, also from Picket Fence Studio. And here I got nearly 100% overfoiling. My hands were shaking. I was so excited. And it looks so great with that black beveled edge, the raised martini glasses from the deco foil, and the shine from the iridescence. It is perhaps the coolest thing that I've done. Then I moved on to metallics, and while I had good results with a lot of what I worked with, what I am going to show you is a less good result, but actually still usable. I think the problem was that this paper is very, very thin. It's like gold foil copy paper, really. And I'm using transfer gel. Um, not perfect foiling, but doesn't really matter. So what I got was an okay result on the left side, but on the right side, as you can see, even though I ran this through a couple of times, I could not get that center portion um, of the card to pick up. I like the distress look. I'll use it, but it wasn't really what I was going for. After that, I decided I wanted to try white, shiny paper. What I had in my stash was Kodak photo paper. It's at least 15 years old. But that's all I had that was white and shiny. I tried it with regular foiling but I got just a regular foiling result. So I moved on to my stash and got out my Glimmer foil. Glimmer is a slightly different foil for a different system. I've never tried it on my mink, but I went ahead and did that anyway. So in it went with the heat on five, and much to my delight, I did get a different result, a better result with Glimmer foil than I did with regular transfer foil. As you can see, I got plenty of overflowing, which is what I'm looking for to make that bevel. I got a beautiful bevel, and I got a little bit of distressing in the center, which I actually kind of like. I think that distress look is really just sort of elegant. Perfection is overrated, after all. Then I decided it was time to try some new gels. Frankly, I was running low on transfer gel from Deco Foil, but I did have Liquitex Matte Gel, and I also had tacky and dry gel meeting from the crafters workshop, all just hanging out in my stash because you know how that goes, right? I like the way that the matte gel medium 
experiment turned out. I do think it's a little flat, but I actually think that's because I applied a very thin layer of gel medium instead of using a thicker one. You get a better bevel if you have a higher sort of stencil uh, project. So I'll try it again, but I think in general it totally worked. Then I went on to tacky when dry gel medium, which is designed to be used dry. You don't need heat to make it work, but I put it through my make anyway with this beautiful Gina K um, lavender foil. I think it looks so pretty and look at this foil come off. It all stayed behind on the cardstock. I just think it looks fantastic. It is so shiny and you can see that black outline around the stencil design. It's nice and high, not flat at all. And this is so pretty. I can see it as a Mother's Day card, a Valentine's Day card, or maybe I'll just, maybe I'll just keep it because some things are too pretty to give away. I did make this card out of the first example I showed you from my brother using a picket fence dance set. It'll be for his birthday. He's a very okay brother and I'm lucky to have him. And I made this card out of that cute martini background that I just love and a Hero Arts flapper couple that I have had knocking around my stash for too long. I think they go great together. And that brings us back full circle to the snowflake card that is sitting on Lydia Fiedler's desk. And she said, how'd you do it? I said, um, I could show you in a video. I hope you like the video. It's my very first video ever. It is my very first posting or will be to my YouTube channel. And I hope you do all that stuff. Like it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I will be encouraged to try again. Thanks again.